So in the last video, we, we'd shown that we had another type of pattern that uh, always collapsed no matter what the internal part of the number was. So this was a pattern that held for all, yeah, all, all odd binary numbers. I mean, it can only appear starting at six digits, but um, above that, any, any odd binary number of this class is going to um, collapse and it'll make up a constant fraction of 1 16th of, of any odd binary numbers. And we'd seen in our six digit example that we had an example of another pattern that uh, that collapsed immediately. Um, and I said in that video that I was gonna, um, you know, show show that, but I, I've been monkeying with it and haven't been able to uh, figure it out. So I sort of wanted to explain the problem and then instead show a different class of, um, of numbers. So if we look at this here, right, we had this special type of number here, right? Like this is an example of, um, you know, this type of number here, this one here. And then we've got the second one here, this 101001 that collapses immediately. Uh, but it's it's not the same class of pattern. It has that one there. And so if you recall our lovely 10101 pattern, right? We, we know that if we do our binary addition, um, like so, right, these, it's going to smush together, right? Every one is going to slot into a zero, and every zero is going to slot into a one. So it fits together and there's no carry, which was, was, was the problem that we'd identified. So if you have a pattern that's like one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, and there's no carry, um, then this pattern will collapse. But I want a more general rule, and rather than just proving that there's a special case, right? What we're really doing is we're taking two patterns. We're taking a pattern of all zeros ending in one here, right? And then we're taking the pattern and we're adding these two together, right? And you should be able to see how a pattern of all zeros when we do this type of addition, right? Like if you have, then you have one zero one up front one zero one zero zero one right so everything misses right like there's no carries and so you could make a very general pattern for all types of for 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 all classes of numbers but um i mean you can also imagine a pattern that 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 uh that works like so, right? Like if you have one zero one zero zero one one and then something, and then you have zero one at the end, right? If we recall our limits on growth, we know that this is going to remove two digits. Then here, because I have the zero zero, uh, I sync my carry line, right? So if I have a carry line later on here from or from this one one or, or earlier somewhere in this pattern, um, the one falls through at the zero zero. And then I know that I'm only adding one digit here. So um, really I would like a rule that doesn't just account for this pattern, but also accounts for cases like this. And I just don't have that right now. So um, I'm gonna leave it be. Um, and instead I'm going to show you a different type of number. So uh, if we go back to our, our six digits, right, um, there were a whole bunch of numbers that grew here, right? Um, and I think at this point, given that we've done all the easy cases and I can't figure out this other other growth one, it's, it's reasonable to start asking, well, what happens with these ones in blue that are stagnant and what happens with these ones in red that are uh, growing? growing, right? Like when they grow, they're going to become some new pattern or when they stagnate, they're also going to become some new pattern. Uh, it, it, does that new pattern shrink, stagnate or grow, right? So um, in particular, I want to look at a pattern like so. Right, so we know because we've got the double one here, we're only removing one digit. 
and we know up front um, anything could happen. So this pattern could uh, stagnate or it could grow, right? Like if we only add one digit, um, it'll be stagnant. And uh, if we uh, add two digits, right, it'll grow. And we can see with um, six digits here, right, that we have two examples, right? We have this 0011 pattern here, which is stagnant. And then um, we have this other one here, right? Uh, right underneath it, which grows because it's got the double one up front, so that induces a growth of two digits. So I think for these two, we're sort of curious, right? Like, well, uh, can we build a general rule uh, for any of these that after after a single transformation, three n plus one what what happens to these right so i'll just do the um binary addition we get one one or yeah zero and so this is one and one i made a mistake with the k there one and one is zero we're going to add one, we get zero, and then we get one, one. And then, you know, some other stuff happens. Um, I don't know what. Um, for this general class, the pattern reshuffles inside. And then we have, after we add the one, we have this one, zero, one, zero, right? So we're going to strike off that lower end zero with our n over two, right? And then we've got a class here that after a single odd call at step, um, is this one zero one pattern, which we know for any number, um, any odd binary number reduces under the call at's conjecture. So um, yeah, if we use our little proof technique again here, we've got in this example, right, there's one, two, three, four, five, five fixed digits. In our number of length L. So if I have, you know, my odd binary number, that means I have to fix those two digits. So really I have a case like this, right? Um, yeah, which gives us our uh, two to the negative three, which is equal to one eighth. So if we go back to our tally, right, we recall after the last one that for patterns that just reduced, we had five sixteenths total, right? And this is incomplete. Um, we know from um, we, we know from this example up here that there we can make this bigger. Um, I just don't have a rule that's inclusive of all of the patterns um, for all numbers. And now we're going to add one eighth to this. So I mean, that's two sixteenths, right? After um, the first step through, right? So right now we're at seven sixteenths of all patterns. Um, reducing all odd patterns right so we're getting close to half um which is uh i think i think it's pretty neat that you can just prove that like seven sixteenths of all odd numbers out to infinity of any length l um will reduce under the collats conjecture um with some pretty simple tricks um i think obviously the next set would be to ask, well, what happens after two steps and three steps? Um, 
I don't want to keep going down that road because it, it I think it becomes a bit Sisyphusian. Um, and there's clearly some other stuff going on. But uh, I like that, you know, without too much complicated mathematics, I mean, hopefully this has all been followable for most people. Um, yeah, we've got... Uh, I think we've got some pretty strong results here, right? It's not like powers of two that are shrinking as uh, as a result of things. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to think about the problem some more to figure out what to, to, to put up there. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys are finding this interesting too.